Hey folks, it's Andrew Kilpatrick here, and let me tell you about the sequencer portion of the carbon sequencer. So the best way to think about the carbon sequencer is to think about each track as a separate 64 step step sequencer. It can play back at a different tempo based on the master clock. It can have a different start and length than all the other tracks. It can use all different settings for the tonality, like the scale quantizing, and a bunch of other different parameters. There are 64 total steps. These are shared amongst all scenes within a song. And you can then have each scene play back a different range of notes. So let me give you an example. So let's say we have just this track here. Let me set the length. I think I want to make it be eight steps long. I have it set to 16th notes. So if I reset this, play this, there's no data there right now. So let me just record a, a quick sequence in. Now if I apply a pattern, a gate pattern, now that's one way of quickly getting in some notes into the sequencer. Now another way is to use the a real-time recording function. So if I'm running the sequencer and I hit record, you'll hear a metronome that will play during the lead-in and then when the loop goes around it will record for real and then after the loop is done it will stop recording and we'll start playing back. So let's try something. And you'll notice that the notes got quantized into the current grid. Now, if we want to overdub, we can just hit record again and add something else. Okay, now let's record on a second track at the same time. So we've got this track set for eighth notes, and we've selected a, a length of 16 steps. So let's do a real-time recording on this track. go back over here we can remix and change this track around in real time while the other one is playing now notice that these are not playing synchronized to the same start position so you can have complete flexibility over how that works Let's talk about step record a little more. Let me clear this track and I'm going to back it up so it's only eight steps long again. And let me do some step recording, but this time I want to insert some rests into our sequence. So let me play the first note, but I don't want to put a note here. Let's say I would just want to move it over and put a note here. So I just use the select or the start control to move across and put notes wherever I want them. And now when we go off the end of the length of the sequence, then the recording will stop automatically. Just like that. Okay, let's talk about a few of the other things that you can do while the sequence is running. So for instance, let's get this playing again. So on track two, you can hear we've got this bass thing playing. Let me mute track one for now. Now we can adjust the gate time to make the notes shorter or longer. We can also play the sequence backwards. What else can we do? We can transpose the sequence. So those are the basic functions of the sequencer. We'll talk about some more details in future videos, but that should give you a pretty good overview of how to record things 
and then get things playing multiple tracks at the same time and perform by adjusting the different parameters in real time. Thanks for watching.